Well, hey there, it's uh, mid-February, and I just thought I would talk a little bit about the plantings that I've done this year at this point. I started out early this year with onions and um, with some fava beans and some um, and artichokes. And I did that in January. And one of the, and so what you can see here, these onion trays that I have, um, I mean, they've come along pretty well. What I'm debating about is, can I put these out in the greenhouse? We just had a pretty cold part of winter here in Portland and uh, it's supposed to thaw out and then it's supposed to be kind of in the low to mid 40s during the day for the rest of the days and not get down too much below mid 30s at night. So I'm thinking that I might go ahead and put these in, in the greenhouse because um, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 trays of different kinds of onions, leeks, um, some of them bulbing onions, some of them green onions going on here. And that's just taking up a lot of space under lights that I need for, you know, it's full on seed planting time now and I need that space. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these out into the greenhouse in the next few days, hopefully, once the kind of snow is and ice is melted out and I can walk around there okay. Um, and that way um, I've got more space under the lights for, for more seeds. Uh, so that's one thing I'm going to try out. And what I mean by trying that out is, you know, will, will these do okay in the colder weather and certainly not as much light as, as what they're getting constantly under these LED lights that I've got going on. Um, beyond that, I've, you know, what I've planted so far, I've planted, I've planted my peppers out. I've planted out the, the tomatoes and seeds. I don't have them under lights yet because I ran out of light space. I've got new lights coming in. Um, in the next couple of days, so I'll get those lights set up and they'll, they'll be under lights soon, but I figured they might, they can get started with the process of germination um, before that, um, sitting kind of warm in these warm uh, cell trays where it stays about 69 to 71 degrees down here in this in this basement. Um, not on purpose, by the way, it's just just the way the house heating system is. It's, there's no, there's no heat vent down here, but for whatever reason, the basement is staying that temperature because of heating the rest of the house. Um, so beyond having done the peppers and tomatoes, I think there, were, there was one thing that was a little bit iffy there because normally you would think you would do peppers and I also did some eggplants, peppers and eggplants first. They need a longer growing time than the tomatoes and then maybe the tomatoes a couple weeks to, or two to four weeks later, but I just went ahead and did them all at once. So my tomatoes might be a little bit early. Um, that's a little bit debatable. Um, I think I did them about Mar mid March last year. I've done them kind of earlier in February and other years, and so I think it's probably fine. I mean, I, I have space in the greenhouse uh, when it's not quite ready for them to go out that they can be in little cups or pots or whatever to continue growing until they are ready to go out. So, so tomatoes generally, I think you know they they tend to do well no matter what um, on that front. Uh, the other thing that I am doing is um, a lot of the brassica. So I'm planting cabbage and broccoli and, and uh, cauliflower and then a lot of Asian greens, bok choy and choy sum and um, Chinese cabbage and that kind of thing. And I think it might be a little bit early for the bok choy because some of the bok choy has only like a 40, it has basically has a 40 to 50 day window. So if I waited a few weeks and planted, I'd still probably get a good crop before the heat hits. I mean, ideally, I want these kind of uh, Asian greens to be coming in. I want them to be coming online and ready for harvest between mid-April and mid-May, end of May, because once you start getting into June, you start having heat waves. I mean, even even in prior years, we've had like the rogue uh, high 80s day uh, on on a in May, you know, that really wreaks havoc on on these kind of more Asian greens that like the cooler weather. So, um, so yeah, I'm just trying to start them a little bit earlier here and see if that, uh, ensures that I get a good crop for spring and then, and then I'll be done with them and I'll do them again in the fall. Just, I'll do them. I'll sow some in the summer for a fall crop is my plan. All right. Well, that's my planting plan that I'm just talking about here and I'll uh, talk to you guys all later. Take care. Well, Hey, it's a beautiful sunny day here. Sun in my eyes here. I'm just uh, kind of weeding the bed behind me here and I wanted to show you how I use my garden knife for weeding. This is kind of just a quick a quick thing um, and uh, yeah well let me, sh let me show you how it works. So yeah when I'm when I'm in here so I mean with 
kind of the, the, the promise of no-till is if you've been using a lot of compost to build up your soil, it's you supposed to be fairly soft and easy to just kind of pull your weeds out, which it mostly is here, although I would say this soil is not built up with a lot of compost. It had a lot of clay and mud that was just kind of moved around originally. And so <clears throat> kind of violating <laughs> perhaps the tenets of no dig and no till, um, what I actually do a lot of times is I take my garden knife here and I just slip it underneath and then that makes it easier to pull those out. Um, I don't like dig down in and that kind of thing. Just kind of loosening it up a little bit around where the weed is makes it makes it easier to pull some of these some of these weeds out. Yeah, that's it.